Hey guys, Constance here from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So, day two of Zeta is here. Uh, yesterday, we had kind of like the outer portions of the storm system, so it just rained all day yesterday, most of the night yesterday, and now we've got the wind, and the weather is definitely shifted. It is super windy outside, and it is just dropping in temperature. Uh, we're not supposed to get down super, super cold tonight. Definitely colder than it was last night. Last night was around 56 or so. Tonight it's supposed to get down to 47. Tomorrow night it's supposed to be 31. So tomorrow I will be going out there and putting in all the covers for the garden beds, the ones that I have things growing in, like my cabbage, my carrots, and all that stuff. So I will be covering all of those. Um, I'm in a little bit of a bind. Uh, I was going through the barn out there and realized I can't find my row covers. The, the fabric stuff that I use, uh, I know I've got some and I can't find it. So, uh, if I end up not finding it, I'm going to have to go to Lowe's and get like plastic sheeting. It's not ideal, but in a pinch it will work. You could also use um, fabric, uh, old bed sheets, things like that. I don't have any extra bed sheets. We kind of purged all that stuff. Um, so, I'm going to have to get some plastic sheeting if I can't find my row covers. Uh, fingers are crossed. I just, I don't know where else they could be. Um, and it's too late to order them because I need them tomorrow and there's no way Amazon will get them here in time or anywhere else and I, I can't find those locally. So, uh, yes, that will be on the agenda for tomorrow. But, I just got done harvesting something. Now, if you have followed along on the garden tours, all year. I did those weekly garden tours throughout the season. You know that I planted loofahs out in the garden and I had big beautiful loofah vines just everywhere and not a loofah to be found. So how did I just harvest loofah? From the compost pile. Apparently last year I threw a loofah out there that was fully mature and had seeds in it and so it just grew itself by itself, utterly on its own. So I've got a five gallon bucket here completely filled with loofahs. Now, I don't know if any of them are mature enough for me to properly use. Um, some of them do feel like they may be. So I will let these sit for a day or two to kind of cure a little bit, lay them out on some um, newspaper and then I will see if we can't utilize these. Now, I do want to share also little bitty ones like this, and there were gobs of these out there all over the place. Well, this one might be close, but definitely smaller ones like this. These are actually totally edible. You can just slice them up and saute them like you would summer squash or zucchini, and eat them. Uh, you can also put them in soups. So there's all sorts of ways you can cook and eat young loofahs because they're just, they're a gourd and they're a lot like a squash. So totally edible. But generally the reason you grow the loofah gourds is because of what is inside. Inside when a loofah gourd gets fully matured and and seasoned, it the inside of it becomes that fibrous, stiff, net almost type of mesh substance that you buy in fancy bathroom boutiques to exfoliate your skin or scrub your dishes, loofah or dishcloth gourd. That's what these things are. A lot of people think that loofahs grow in the ocean. That's sea sponges. These are loofahs. Two different things, but uh, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully, I will be able to use some of these. And either way, I will film the process and 
take you along to see if it worked. I would have liked to have filmed outside and the harvesting and all of that stuff, but it is insanely windy outside. Uh, this storm is just, it came in quick. Um, I mean, like an hour ago, it was blue skies and sunny, and now it is just ugly outside. Um, I've got sunflowers snapping out there, which is kind of sad, but that's just the way Mother Nature rolls. So, Mr. Smith has been out of town all week, but he just arrived in town and the canines are going to go utterly, completely insane. There's a reason I am not even worrying about painting the trim on my back door or the back door while we've got these crazy dogs. Someday down the road, I'll paint the trim. No, scratch that. I'll replace the trim and all of that, but not anytime soon. And you will see why. Alright, so we are doing a little bit of hunting season prep. What are you for? Hi. Uh, you said you were wanting to move that thing eventually. Well, yeah. I would put it about chest high. Still higher? No, chest, no, where you were at. Yeah, maybe right there. Or hold this. Huh? No, I think it'll be fine. We'll see. out here baby what's going on girl oh nubsy too hi baby Still solid? Yeah. <laughs> See the kitties? Hey, don't tupper nuts. Tupper. 
That's exactly the angle I took when I got that one two years ago. I didn't hunt last year because I was letting Josh and Jack do it. Hey, do nub nubs. How are you? So bow season has opened and I plan on coming out here and hunting tomorrow. So we are checking on the tree stands, making sure everything is still nice and solid, checking the straps, all of that, putting out uh, another trail camera and collecting the SD cards <clears throat> from the ones that are already out here. So we can just see what's been coming around. Yesterday evening, right as it was getting a dark, a young buck came out into the middle of the pasture and just kind of circled around and circled around and came right up by the house. So it was pretty cool. I got a little bit of footage. It's getting dark, but you can make it out. So that one right there is the is the camera that I've had forever. Head go head go. <laughs> so is this the only one or is there one? There's more? another one down there. We will have to get some uh... new pads. Yeah, I think careful that thing always falls down. I think the squirrel's been eating on this one. <laughs> There's like chew marks. Probably. Two marks and claw marks. Mm-hmm. That one always falls down and hits me in the head. It's one of the reasons I don't like that tree stand. And right there. Mm-hmm.
Come on, guys. Come on, babies. Ooh, she's got her tail all poofed up. So sometimes I like to just come out here when I have a moment and sit here in my tree stand because it is utterly peaceful. You have the quiet, you have the view, and it's just nice to take that moment. Now it took me a long time <laughs> to be okay with getting up in this tree stand because I actually have developed a bit of a fear of heights over the years, which I, I mean I know the cause of it, but it's still an, you know, something you have to overcome. And while I'm now okay with this tree stand, with the height of this tree stand, I think it's the only heights I'm okay with. <laughs> That said, I do grip that ladder with a death grip as I'm going up and down it. So we came out and checked the SD cards for the cameras. Got a few deer on there. there there's some things moving through here. Um, so tomorrow I'm going to come out and do my first hunt of the year. I didn't hunt last year. I let both of my sons hunt um, last year. Our older son had just come back from Germany. He hadn't been able to hunt in years, so gave him that opportunity. And uh, he didn't actually get anything. And to be honest, um, I'm not too insistent that I get a deer this year. If I get a deer, great. But I don't want to take a deer just for the sake of taking a deer. I want to wait for the right one. And if I don't see one, then that'll be okay. Now, I wouldn't mind some jerky made from that venison because venison jerky is delicious. But I will enjoy coming out here and just sitting, having the peace and quiet. And if I don't see a deer, that's the right deer, then that'll be okay. <laughs> 